the nomothetic versus ideographic issue and debate in psychology. Now, this is really a big debate. Which is the best way to go? Should we go in a nomothetic approach way or an ideographic approach way? And here's a nice little diagram that basically gives you the idea about what the differences are. Nomothetic attempts to generalize people, uses objective knowledge and is based on numerical data. Ideographic approaches focus on uniqueness of the individual. They look at subjective experiences of the individual and they are based on the uniqueness of everybody's lives. Okay, well, that's a general way to look at it. Let's now go into more detail. So here we have key terms, simply put. Ideographic means the study of the individual as unique, with no attempt to compare these factors to larger group standards or norm. There's no need there's absolutely no need to do so because the individual is unique and therefore cannot be compared. The, the approach, which is mostly ideographic, is humanistic. Nomothetic means where you make general laws of behaviour so that we can then compare people, we can classify people and we can measure their behaviour as against a norm. So therefore, it's not about everybody is unique. Everybody is unique, but they can be classified. It's worthwhile trying to classify them. Just to go back, in the ideographic approach, there's no need to classify you because you are unique and you cannot be compared to anybody else. So therefore, in the nomothetic approaches, such as biological behaviour or cognitive, future behaviours can be predicted and controlled. So this is therefore largely about science. Now here's some key points for AO1. So once you've learned those points, you've got a two marker, but let's get some more detail for a larger question and for AO1. First point. Ideographic approach is seen as linked to qualitative data such as case studies, interviews and all self-report measures, okay? So they are really about trying to find out why you are unique, why each person is unique. Therefore, the only way to find that out is self-report data. So thus we have humanistic psychologists such as Maslow who are not interested in trying to make laws of behaviour. They are just really wanting to focus on everybody as a unique individual. However, the psychodynamic approach is in a very special position here. It looks like it's ideographic because, you know, Freud used a lot of case studies. And if you go back and you look at Freud, you'll find that was all he did. He got individuals and they came into his clinic, if you like. He put them on a couch and he analysed them. And I don't know, you know, which ones you've done in your course, but there's a whole list of people, mainly females, as you may know, and that's a limitation of it. But either way, that was how he got his raw data for his theory from case studies. But actually, Freud was aiming to make universal laws of behaviour. So even though he was very, you know, he was very much looking at individuals and looking at their unique experience, in the end, he wanted to make overall laws okay and therefore we can compare you to another individual and say you've got a defense mechanism here's an example of a defense mechanism finally nomothetic when we are truly nomothetic we need to look at findings from a large number of individuals and we need to be able to analyse them for statistical significance so it's very scientific. 
Yes, you can use some, you know, questionnaires and you can use IQ tests, but you must have some way to make them quantifiable, okay? So you can get statistical significance. Now let's do some very simple AO3s. Ideographic, what's a plus here? Well, obviously you've got rich, meaningful data such as interviews that are unique, all those case studies such as HM in working memory model and so on. And they give us such an in-depth view of what it's like to have memory loss, etc., etc. What's a minus? Well, it has got a complete lack of scientific method if we take this approach. So it can't be claimed to be scientific. A very good example is, of course, Freud himself. And he's always making generalizations from one particular person and making general laws of you know, behavior. So we have little hands and his fear of horses, if you've done that one, and making general laws of behavior. Okay, so you need to go back and look at Freud and look at the particular studies which you have done, you know, within your class. Finally, nomothetic, a plus. And this is just the opposite. It's got standardized procedures, are very scientific, and we can absolutely decide are they valid and are they reliable so highly scientific and when we use these approaches this will give psychology scientific validity and that's important minus obviously we're going to risk looking at the whole individual if we're just looking at a tiny weeny bit of their behavior and putting them into categories and then trying to label them. So, you know, here's a good example. If you know that you've got a 1% risk of a mental illness, like maybe you know, uh, schizophrenia, it does not tell us much about what it's actually like to have that disorder. It just says 1% risk, 2% risk or whatever, you know. So human experience is minimized and not actually documented. So we learn about schizophrenia as what is a genetic risk, what are the symptoms, but not what it's like to actually experience schizophrenia. Okay, well, I, I certainly hope that was a very quick video and a very simple way to really understand ideographic and nomothetic approaches. Good luck to you all.